Very good, Andy. Let me see if anybody else is in there real quick, and then we'll go to the next person. WD7R taking check-ins. KD5 NLP Mike Glendale. Hey, good morning guys on the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, today we're gonna talk about VHF and what you can expect in terms of range. And I will tell you one thing, everything I'm about to say in this video is gonna require that you do some work and that you do your own testing. With uh, VHF, it is primarily predicated on line of sight. And um, outside of that, your radio, your antenna system, your location, your height above ground, obstructions in the way, um, all of this makes a big difference. So the theory does not hold up all the time. You have to do your own research. So I wanna share with you my uh, experimentation and maybe you can use that as a starting point. So the reason why I want to be able to test my ability to communicate with uh, nearby stations is that it's part of my communications plan in the event that there's a grid down scenario. Uh, so I don't want to have to rely on infrastructure like repeaters on VHF or UHF um, in a grid down scenario. So we're not even going to talk about that. We're going to concern ourselves more with uh, simplex or point to point radio communication and what I found to be possible and where I found the theory can break down based on all of the factors I just mentioned. So obviously not all radios are um, built alike. This is my primary EDC radio. It's the Yaesu FT60R. It's a dual band five watt radio. Um, so it's somewhat limited in its ability to have a little bit more punch. Over here is what I believe is the perfect prepper radio, even though it's discontinued, and it's the Yaesu 857D. This is a 50 watt all band, all mode radio, and very man portable, especially when you put it in a man pack like I have assembled here. And I've done videos on this before. Now, the great thing about this radio is that I can actually increase the power if I need to make a contact. I have the ability to run a whip antenna on top. Not only that, I have the ability to connect this to other antenna systems fairly easily if I need more gain or more directionality or whatever the case may be. So in terms of uh, the first kind of factor, five watt radio, 50 watt radio makes a huge difference. The antennas, these are little uh, whip antennas. Uh, they're omnidirectional. Uh, you're gonna be able to uh, kind of have a omnidirectional uh, pattern of, of radiation. Um, outside on the painter's pole, I will typically run something like a, a Yegi, which is a directional antenna. So I'm focusing the RF radiation at a point. So it allows me to not so much spray everything everywhere and focus all of that RF energy at a station. Um, some other great antennas are uh, J-pole antennas. There's a roll-up version that's pretty easily, easy to throw up in a tree. Um, the antenna I want to show you today is a new one to me. It's called the Extended Double Zep. And um, it's something that a viewer sent me uh, to solve one of my particular problems of how do I operate on single sideband and FM. Uh, single sideband is traditionally um, a horizontally polarized antenna, whereas FM is typically run as a vertical. And the way he designed that antenna, it's able to run in both configurations. Uh, it's also able to pack down nicely fit in my pack and it was designed to be able to screw onto a painter's pole for really easy deployments so bottom line is i know this is a ton of information this is kind of like the intro video of do your research try different radios experiment with different antennas and make a note of all of the stations you're able to talk to uh, make a note of the day of week the time of day uh, the weather conditions, how much power you're running with what radio, which antenna, uh, get a signal report from the remote station, uh, ask them about their antenna system, and build this map or this historical log of uh, basically all the people you're able to make contacts with. Now, what we're going to talk about a little bit today is we'll show you the extended double zap and what I'm able to do on single sideband with the 857D on 50 watts with the antenna up about 16 feet. And I used a um, uh, SSB net that uh, we have on Tuesday nights to basically uh, plot everybody that checked into the net. 
I made notes of who I could hear, who I couldn't hear, uh, signal reports if I was fortunate to get one, um, all of that good stuff. And it gives me a nice picture of what I'm able to do in my area. And uh, I have been working on a prototype for MCOM tools for the uh, tactical awareness map that now allows me to get um, line of sight uh, data. And basically it will calculate based on my elevation, uh, my antenna above ground, and then the remote station, uh, basically whether I can make contact with them. And the other goal of this um, tool that I'm writing is it basically has a fat red uh, button and a fat green one that will actually tell you, hey, you're probably not gonna make this contact. Hey, you probably are. And then there's the ability for me to go in and confirm it. So we'll talk a little bit about that and I'll show you a quick demo. So we'll probably jump into that demo in about, actually, let's do the demo now. And uh, after we're done with the demo, we'll do a little bit of um, the footage I captured from the single sideband net. So the point here, guys, is I didn't wanna go too super deep. I just want to plant the seed of do your research, do your testing, get licensed so you can all do all of that stuff and figure out which antennas, radios, and all that good stuff works best in your areas for your local communication needs. All right, guys, so let's take a look at the tactical awareness map in MCOM tools and my first pass of trying to calculate line of sight. So uh, I had nine stations uh, that I had recorded as part of the single sideband net on Tuesday. And you'll notice here that I have the uh, call sign of the remote station, their uh, latitude and longitude. Uh, I basically use their zip code on file to calculate it. So it's not perfect, but it's roughly for estimation. And then uh, I get their altitude from that geolocation. And then I calculate from my physical GPS location to this lat long, the distance. So in this case, 14.10 miles. I can also calculate a bearing, so if I have a directional antenna, I can orient the beam in their direction and maximize my ability to communicate. Now this is the big button I wanted to show you. Uh, LOS is line of sight, and here my calculations are saying, based on where I'm located and where the other station is located, not counting any obstructions like hills, mountains, buildings in between, I probably can communicate 35 miles on the high end. And since that is, um, since the distance point to point between my station and theirs is 14 miles, we're obviously green. And I will tell you, I was able to talk to Mike. You'll hear him in a bit. Now, the piece that I added is uh, the ability for me to click on it. And I show you a little bit more uh, details. So you can confirm here with the up button or the down button, whether you're able to make that contact with the remote station. Uh, I'm going to add the ability for you to provide an inventory of all your radios, uh, all your antennas, which mode you're operating, which band, and which frequency you're on, and how much power you're running. So it'll log this historically. I haven't built that yet. Uh, this portion is just a prototype, but it'll allow you to be able to use this information later. In fact, I will probably build some tools to help you predict based on this data. Uh, apart from that, uh, it also shows you what the max line of sight was. That was the value in the green button. In this case, it was 35.48 miles. But then I also have another calculation that uses the max line of sight that bakes in what I'm calling a derating uh, factor. So sometimes if it turns out it's too aggressive, uh, you could back it down. So I think I put a derating factor for myself of 0.7 or 70%. So this is a much more conservative estimate. Now, I have struggled to make MCOM tools 100% offline. There's one feature that requires you to be online, and it's not a big deal, and it's the ability to pull in the, hey, what's that graph? So uh, when this modal pops up, it will actually show you a path analysis of the contact. And this is where I believe the theory breaks down. You'll notice that my station is way up here at about 2,200 feet, and there is a mountain in my way at about 3,200 feet. That should not be possible with line of sight for me to have this contact. Um, I've been reading that VHF has a property in propagation where it can go over kind of terrain features. Uh, obviously it did. So bottom line here is if you had looked at this graph, you would say there's no way in hell I can make this um, uh, contact. Sorry for my French. And um, so this is a do your own testing. And that's why 
I want to give you as much information in MCOM tools uh, about the line of sight calculation, other tools that do a much better job of the path analysis, and then just marrying that with your experience. Um, so last night, for example, I had all the stations in here so I could tab through, and there was one station in particular that went bright red. I'd said my line of sight was 40 miles based on our respective elevations. Uh, the distance between us was 43 miles. I was still able to make a contact. Uh, my signal report was an S3, S4, uh, but we were still communication grade. So, like I said, this is why your testing is really important. Um, for those of you who haven't seen MCOM tools, the other cool thing is that this is 100% offline, uh, with the exception of that one chart. Uh, let me look up another friend of mine, uh, Robert and 7 END. And just like that, we're able to uh, zoom in on his position here. He is uh, 22 miles from my location, and our line of sight should be good up to a maximum of 45 miles, which we're uh, well below. Um, and as you can see here, there's a few uh, obstructions in the way. And I'm also able to talk to Rob all the time. All right, guys. So um, I'm going to close here and just leave all of that with food for thought. MCOM tools, the beta is coming uh, probably in the summer. Uh, so apologies, I can't get it out any sooner than that. And uh, let's jump into the single sideband net so you can get a feel for the net and what it's like to actually be on sideband because sideband is much more uh, effective and efficient in terms of bandwidth compared to FM, which means you can go a little bit farther. And uh, those Baofan guys, they don't have single sideband capabilities. All right, let's check out the demo. Oh, and be strong, be safe, and be prepared. All right, guys, so we're outside, and I just want to show you how simple it is to have a really inexpensive, uh, powerful antenna system. I just have a 16-foot painter's pole, and I've got the uh, extended double zep on top vertically polarized. Let's go bring it down and uh, turn it horizontally so we can do some sideband. So all we got to do is uh, bring down this section. And uh, the cool thing about this is all we have to do is now turn it since it's on the PVC and up we go again. All right, we're all set. So 40 bucks for the painter's pole and I don't know how much uh, mailing put into parts for the extended double zep, but um, probably the build isn't more than like 30 or 40 bucks. Let's go test it out. Hey there, Mike. Thanks for uh, having me back. Uh, yeah, I was sick out uh, the, the month of um, uh, January for the most part. Uh, feeling good now. Recovered about four or five days ago. And uh, pretty much the only thing I've been doing right now is trying to get a new antenna up. I had a um, viewer from Canada, VE6VID, and he sent me a uh, extended double zep on two meters. That's what I'm running right now. Uh, horizontally polarized and uh, just doing a little bit of research about it. So I don't think it's going to work as well as the uh, the Yegi that I had in the past, uh, maybe a couple months when I was last on the net. Outside of that, I have been experimenting with my uh, MCOM tools software project and uh, been getting into um, trying to figure out line of sight calculations and uh, using tonight's net actually as an example to see um, who I can hear based on uh, the numbers I'm getting out of my program. So anybody who knows anything about uh, an extended double zap or um, doing some better line of sight calculations or radio horizon, let me know. Uh, with that said, Mike, I'll hand it back over to you. KT1, RU1. Running an extended double zap on the VHF. That's that's interesting. Over. 
Oh, it definitely works, for sure. Uh, let me pass it to Grant, uh, WD6CNF, real quick. Uh, I think that's um, our most distant station right now. He's in uh, he's in Queen Creek, so uh, I want to see if he can give you a signal report there. And uh, uh, curious, Grant, uh, your uh, your thoughts on an extended double zap for two meters there, over? Well, you know, double zaps operate uh, pretty well. HF and uh, it'll probably design correctly operate well at uh, uh, at uh, VHF frequencies. Um, the, the whole point is to have a quick uh, mobile antenna, uh, but if you can put up something with more elements, it's usually better. <laughs> but if you're mobile, maybe that, that's the key. Uh, back to you, WD7 or WD6 in F. By the way, guys, I you about uh, the S3, but the S4, but you're uh, off the side of the beam, I'm pointed northwest. I think if I remember right, I kind of have to move the beam around to get you stronger. Go ahead. Yeah, I did. Thanks for the uh, signal report, Grant. Yeah, you're a solid um, SA out here in uh, New River. Uh, I don't know how far we are. Let me actually pull you up real quick. Um, see what our distance is point to point. And uh, it looks like we're about 43 miles uh, point to point right now. Okay, but uh, let's see. Uh, are you, uh, uh, am I southwest of you? Negative. You're uh, southeast of me. All right, appreciate the signal report. Uh, looks like everything's working, software included. Uh, Mike, I'll hand it back to you, and uh, I'll stick around and listen to what everybody has to say tonight. Again, thanks for working me into the rotation. KT1RUN. Well, thanks a lot, Malin. VE6VID um, out there uh, north of me in Canada. You heard it. Works great. Thanks for the extended double zap.